Oh, welcome. Welcome again. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this fascinating time of teaching of the Word of God. Welcome. I want you to share this video with as many as you can share with. We are sorry for coming up this time. We should have been up by 5 o'clock GMT, 1700 hours. But we were caught up with some issues. So we want to welcome you. This is our team song. Yeah. We had to just choose a specific team song because sometimes Facebook come and cancel this. So we want to deal with the issue of perspective today. Um... It's very vital, it's very important. Perspective answers everything. Perspectives affects and influences the way we relate and behave and the way we see things. I want to take this song down. I want to take this song down. And I'm talking about perspective today. And perspective is very important. Uh, we want to bring three words into, I want to consider three words today and look at our perspective of those words. What we, what are our perspective of those words? And we see how those, um, our perspective have affected the way we view those words and the way we see things. Um, Perspective is actually has to do with the way we see your perspective. So now people say, what is your perspective? What do you see about this thing? Uh, as you look at life, what is your perspective about life? And there are three words that are commonly used in the church. Um, because of people's perspective of these words, it has affected the way the church or the kingdom citizens behave, it has affected and influenced the way the majority of us look at things, the way the majority of us behave, the way the majority of us relate with these words. Now, if you look at the introduction of the text or, or what I put up there, we, 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 we said we, we put two scriptures up there. I want to be as quiet as I can be. I want to be as calm as I can be because these are things that have really been troubling my spirit. I was in the shower and God gave me, I mean, these words. Though I was in a meeting and um, um, my apostolic leader, Anderson William, was talking about perspective. And then I begin to connect it with these three words that I, I, I God gave me. Um, to look at them. Um, the first thing we want to look at is from the Bible. We want to look at Ephesians chapter number 4, verses 11 and 12. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, the Bible says, Therefore, excuse me, verse 11, it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ uh i want to leave 13 and 14 up i talk about 14 13 and 14 on sunday but there's a word that came up in this passage that i want us to look at first of all the bible says god himself has given some apostles some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Now, God gave them for the equipping of the saints. Now, we discussed this on Sunday lengthily that the fivefold ministry was given for the purpose of equipping the saints, for the purpose of edifying the saints, for the purpose of building the saints, for the purpose of molding the saints. Now, for the work of ministry, for the work of ministry. And I want us to look at that word ministry. 
Now, what is your perspective of the word ministry? Now, a lot of people would think that when we talk about ministry, it is restricted to what we do in the church or what we do in yeah the church. <clears throat> when the word ministry comes to mind. And this perspective of the word ministry has affected the way we do every other thing. One of the words that keep troubling me too is the word are the words secular and spiritual. But I believe personally that when one becomes saved, when one becomes born again, when one becomes a citizen of the kingdom of God, there is nothing like there is no separation between <laughs> spiritual and secular. What do I mean? Everything you do, you're supposed to do it as unto the Lord. Your ministry is not only what you do in the church. Your ministry is not only what you do. Like people would think that ministry is ushering, singing in choir, singing in praise team, pastoring, doing evangelism, and etc., etc. Now, my perspective is that when you become saved, when you become a citizen of the kingdom of God, everything you do should be done as ministry. Maybe you are a medical doctor. Your work as a medical doctor should be considered as a ministry. A ministry unto God. Yeah, though you are giving people injection, though you are diagnosing people cases when they're not well, but you, your approach to that work as a medical doctor should be seen as a ministry and as a ministry for God unto God's people. Now, the reason why many of us we are only serious with what we do in the church and we do it in a godly manner and we do it with all of the zeal and zest and the reverential fear we have for God in the church. But when we get out there as a business manager, as an economist, as a politician, we tend to behave different because we do not perceive, we do not see what we do as ministry. So we think that out there we can steal, out there we can rob people, out there we can do the work we are doing carelessly. Now when the apostle says that God gave us apostles, he gave us prophets, he gave us evangelists, he gave us pastors, he gave us teachers to equip us. Yeah, we, 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 these ministry gifts are given to us to equip us, to build us, to do the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry is equated to every work that you do. Whether you are a driver, whether you are a pilot, whether you are a lawyer, whether you are a business person, you are doing the work of the ministry you don't have two you are not a two personality you don't have one life for the church and another life for your job out there so if you know it it it, it is same I, I, I will get to the other word anyway let me not jump the gun so your ministry ministry a minister is one who serves ministry is the place of service Ministry is the place of service. So wherever you find yourself rendering service, it becomes your ministry. It becomes your ministry. Let's look at Daniel. I wrote Daniel chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 3. Daniel, I want to look at the whole life of Daniel and his friends. The Bible never told us that Daniel was a pastor. The Bible never showed where Daniel was in the office of a prophet prophesying. What I know about Daniel from Daniel chapter 1, going down, though Daniel spoke revelatorily, though Daniel spoke the mind of God, though Daniel spoke about the things that will happen in the future, but Daniel was a politician. Daniel worked in the government of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel worked in the government of Belshazzar. 
Daniel worked in the government of Darius. Daniel was a politician, but Daniel saw his work as ministry, as ministry to God. You see, as a kingdom citizen, as a child of God, as somebody who has accepted Jesus, our ministry is the sum total of everything we do in life. The sum total of everything you do in life should be a ministry. If you perceive, if you, if you have this perspective of what is called ministry, you will not have one standard for what you do in the church and another standard for what you do in the world. I mean, out there, in your public service, in your business service, in your service, in work. You know, um, most of the time we will call the work we do, maybe whether in um, government sector, whether in the business arena, in the economic arena, whether in the transport or the educational arena, those work are not circular. For you, they are not your circular work. You are still supposed to employ and imply biblical principles as you do those work. You don't have one standard for a circular work, um, circular in inverted column, circular work, and another standard for what you call spiritual work. You are supposed to be a spiritual person in every area, every field, every discipline. Talk about, take for an example, you are a deacon in a church and you carry out your duty in reverence to God because you see it as a ministry. You reverentially execute your duty, your work, your function as a Christian worshiper, as a choir leader, as a prayer team leader in your church. And the same you is appointed in a public place as an accountant. And then you, be, because of the perspective that the work as an accountant is a circular work, the work as an accountant is not a ministry, so you do not approach it as a ministry. And the same you is corrupt. The same you is misbehaving. The same you is not executing or carrying out your work as a spiritual work, carrying out your work as a ministry unto God because of the wrong perspective. Now, Having read this scripture, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, the Bible tells us that the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are given to us to equip us, to build us, to strengthen us, to edify us, to mold us, to train us, to make us, so that we will be equipped to do the work of the ministry. Now, let me ask you one question. A church of 300 people or 3,000 people. Are everybody in that church going to be in ministry in the church? No. But everybody is supposed to be trained. So that when they get out there, they will employ and imply the principles of the word of God to their job. They don't have to wear a t-shirt with Jesus loves you. They don't have to wear a t-shirt with I am safe, but their life, their comportment, their conversant, the way they execute their work dictates that they are different. The Bible says, as for this Daniel, he had another spirit. And because of that, the king thought of putting everything in charge, in the charge of Daniel. Daniel was one of the three governors uh, 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 that was set over the, the province of Babylon. Daniel was also one of the leaders. Now, there are two dimensions to the church, according to what I read. One dimension is the church gathers. Now, why do we gather as a church? We gather to be equipped. We gather to be empowered. We gather to be built up. We gather to be capacitated. We gather to be strengthened. We gather to be trained. We gather to be molded. We gather to be made. 
Now, so when the church gathers, the, it is the work of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher to build us, to equip us, to capacitate us, to mold us so that the second aspect of the church or dimension of the church is the church scatter. Now, after the service on Sunday, Monday morning, the church service does not end. The service does not end. The service continues. Monday morning, the church is going to be represented in all the schools, in all the government offices, in all the business centers, in the transport sector, in the educational sector, in the economic sector, in the political sector. All of the different functionaries, the church is going to be represented in those areas. And when the church is scattered, the church is scattered to shine as light. The church is scattered to be the salt in the community, to provide a, a taste, influence. The church scatters to provide the standard of God. The church scatters and the church is represented in every area. That is why it is distasteful and it is not sens it's nonsensical for us to say that we have one life for the church and another life for outside there. No, the service continues and the church continues to go on. The reason why we gather as a church, we gather so that we can be equipped. Now, you saw Ephesians. The Bible says he gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and teachers, and pastors, pastors, and teachers for the equipping. So when we gather, we gather to be equipped, we gather to be edified, we gather to be built, we gather to be strengthened. So that in the different hospitals, the church is gathered there. The church is scattered in the hospitals, in the different hospitals, because the very praise and worship leader that led us in praise and worship on Sunday is a nice in the church, in the hospital, rather, sorry. She is still a church. The service still continues. She cannot behave differently. It is still you. You are still, you know, because, listen to me, as a citizen of Liberia, everywhere you go, you remain a citizen of Liberia. You don't change. <laughs> Even if you were naturalized as an American or European, in your passport, they were right there, born in Liberia. So, you stay in Liberia as a kingdom citizen. You are still a citizen of the kingdom. Even while you are in the different hospitals working as nice. Even while you are in the different government offices working. Even as you are in the different schools, whether as student or teacher. Whether you are in the, well, even if you are in the different business sectors, different centers rather, in the market, in the stores, you are still a kingdom citizen. You're supposed to maintain your culture. You're supposed to maintain your way of life. You're supposed to maintain your standard. You're supposed to maintain your comportment and your department. You're supposed to remain a kingdom citizen because you are carrying out a ministry to the world. The same you as you were doing your ministry as a priest and worshiper in the church and you went Monday to the hospital as a nurse, you are still carrying out your ministry. <laughs> what you could not do was in the church, what you could not say was in the church, the way you could not speak when you were in the church, you are not allowed to speak like that was in the clinic. Because you are still a citizen. Your citizenship has not suspended because service ended. The service does not end. It is just one other dimension of the church. The church was gathered on Sunday morning when you were singing. The church was gathered on Sunday morning when you were serving the communion as a deacon, as a minister. The same church continues on Monday to Friday or Saturday when you are functioning in the different area. There is nothing circular about you because you are not a circular person. And because you are not a circular person, the job you are doing should not be considered as a circular job. It should still be considered as a spiritual job because a spiritual person is doing it. You make it spiritual. So it is troubling that 
people who are supposed to be ambassadors of the kingdom of God in the different areas are not representing the kingdom. Listen, an American ambassador to Liberia does not cease being an American. A Liberian ambassador to America does not cease being a Liberian. The culture, the way of life, the mannerism, the language should not change because they, they are in Liberia. The ambassador in Liberia does not change anything about that ambassador. He's only accredited and assigned to Liberia. That's how it is. You as a kingdom citizen representing the kingdom of God in the different sectors of the society does not change your citizenship, does not change your nationality. You are still a kingdom citizen representing the kingdom of God in that government office you find yourself, representing the kingdom of God in that hospital you are working as a nurse or a doctor or a physician assistant. You stay a kingdom citizen. So, you are a kingdom citizen doing ministry in a different terrain. Your ministry continues. So, ministry is not restricted to what we do in the church. I want us to change our perspective concerning what ministry is. The second word I want us to look at, and then and the next thing, change your perspective about what spiritual and secular is. The fact that you, a spiritual person, let's look at Jesus. Jesus came to the earth. From the beginning, Jesus was a carpenter. Jesus did a lot of things to meet people. He fed people. So Jesus feeding people, should we say it's a secular job? No. There is nothing secular about him. Being a carpenter, should we say it's a secular thing? No. There is nothing secular about him. The Bible says, in all things we do, we should do it as unto the Lord, to the glory of of God. So everything we do, we do it as unto the Lord and we do it to the glory of God. We see it as our ministry to the people out there. It's a ministry. You don't have to be quoting Bible verse before you know you are rendering a ministry. The word ministry simply means service. Yeah, service. A place of service. To minister. A minister is one who serves. So you do not cease becoming a kingdom citizen because you are not quoting Bible verse in the service you are rendering. <laughs> or you are not doing it in a building. You know, in a building called church. But you are still a servant of God. And as a servant of God, every service you render, you render it as unto the Lord. Hallelujah. The next word I want to bring into perspective is the word man or woman of God. Many times when this, word, when this word is used, woman of God, man of God, what comes to many people's mind is a man of God <laughs> is a pastor. A woman of God is supposed to be a pastor or a prophetess or a praying mother or an apostle or whatever. Now, I want to disabuse your mind from this. I want you to change your perspective. Now, simple English, man of God. What does it mean? It just means the man is of God. The woman is of God. It doesn't restrict it to pastor. It doesn't restrict it to apostle. It doesn't restrict it to um, 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 evangelist or pastor or teacher. No, there is no restriction. There is no limitation. It simply means you are God's man in that place. So a man of God is not restricted to a pastor. A woman of God is not restricted to a female pastor or a female prophetess or whatever, a, a prophetess or a female apostle or whatever. No. A man of God is any man that God is using. Listen, let's say for example, do you agree with me that God has interest in the medical world? Do you agree with me that God has interest in the political world? Do you, do you agree with me that God has interest in the business world? Now, if you agree with me, then that means God needs men in those places. Who is God's man to politics, to the political world? Who is God's man or who is God's woman to the political world? 
who is God's man to the economic world? Who is God's man to the world of science and technology? Who is God's man to the field of medicine? Who is God's man there? So God needs men and women in those places. So a man of God is the man that God is using in any area of life. Now listen to me. Every kingdom citizen is a man or a woman of God. Yeah, you are of God. You belong to God. And God has interest in every field and discipline of life. So God will choose his man to use in those places. Amen. The Bible says the eyes of God, as First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9, the eyes of God are running to and fro throughout the whole earth. God is looking for somebody to show himself strong in their behalf who is lo- whose heart is loyal to him. So God is looking for men in every area. The Bible tells us that God needs men in every area. God needs men in every sector of life, in every area of life. So if God is using a man in a particular area, he becomes a man of God. Now listen to me. You as the accountant in that uh, 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 business firm, you as the accountant in that public place, you are, as a kingdom citizen, you are God's man there. It's like I enter a company and say, does God have a man here? <laughs> what do I mean? Am I asking if God has a pastor in that business? No. Does God have a man here? That means, is anybody here representing God? A man of God is the representative of God. And God wants to be represented in the politics. Unfortunately, many Christians with titles, whether pastor, whether bishop, whether a deacon, whether a praise and worship leader, whether a prayer warrior, whatever nomenclature or title you carry, that are working in the public sector, that are working in the private sector other than the church, they are not representing God there. Even in our country, Liberia, here, there are many people who had the title pastors and they went as representatives, they went as judges to courts, they went in as um, 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 uh, 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 senators, they went in as uh, 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 workers in the executive branch and they were never representing God there. They represented their own interest, they represented the kingdom of darkness by their deeds, by their activities. They never represented God there. Now, that is not a church. I didn't say you should go and quote St. John chapter 3, verse 16. I didn't say you should go and quote Bible. But the principles of the Bible, many of them became corrupted because they did not see themselves as representative of God. So they got entangled with the corruption in the system. They did not go in the system as light to affect the system, to permeate the system, to bring the glory of God in the system. Look at Daniel and his friends. No, read the book of Daniel. There was nowhere Daniel quoted this from the Torah. There was nowhere Daniel did anything like saying that he was preaching. But Daniel represented the kingdom of God in his decision making. Daniel represented the kingdom. He represented the kingdom. Shadrach, Mitchell, and Abednego refused to bow to the image of Nebuchadnezzar. Today, that image could be the image of corruption. They looked at Daniel's life looking for something to accuse Daniel of. They could find nothing to accuse Daniel of except they said Daniel should not pray. The Bible said, I mean, you as a king, citizen of the kingdom of God, you that is born again, you that is a child of God, where you work in the public sector, where you work in the business at the outside of the church setting, can they try to find something to accuse you of and will they not find anything? Corruptible. So you are God's man to that place. You are not only a man of God in the church. 
<laughs> in fact, matter of fact, I don't think God needs men, men of God in the church as he needs men of God. I mean, more than he needs men of God in those places because in the church there is little light. And light will be more appreciated in the dark than in the light. Where there is light, whether it is the light of a match, whether it is a lantern, whether it is a telephone light, whether it is a flashlight, I mean, too much light will not be appreciated in set area than in the dark area. The reason God placed you in that place, the reason God put Daniel and his friends in Babylon, because Babylon was dark. I remember it came to a place where Darius, Belteshazzar rather, said, nobody said, Daniel, has your God whom you serve deliver you? Daniel said, yes, king, live forever. He said, nobody, he wrote a decree that everybody should worship the God of Daniel. A taxi driver once told a man of God say, your life is sounding too loud that I can't hear what you are saying. It's not about what you say. It's not about what you profess. It's what you are by your character, by your lifestyle, by the way you behave in that place. People, the Bible say, let your light so shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. They want to see the people want to see. So, a man of God is not restricted to a pastor. If you are hearing me here, child of God, wherever you work, wherever you are, you are a man of God, you are a woman of God. It simply means God's representative. That school you teach, that school you attend, the place you make your business, the place you work as a nurse, as a doctor, as a lawyer, as whatever capacity you are in, Everything you see, listen to me. The sum total of all we do should be in worship to God, should be in honor to God, should be in reverence to God. That this is my ministry. I'm 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 God's man in this place. I'm God's man here. If God wants to do anything here, it is me God will use. If America wants to do anything in Liberia, America will consult her embassy. America will do it through her ambassador. You are the kingdom ambassador to wherever you find yourself. Anything heaven wants to do in that place, heaven will consult you because you are representing heaven. You know, God is a king. God has a kingdom. God is looking for people. God wants to extend his kingdom to the earth. And God is looking for people to rule with him and along with him. I mean, rule with him and on his behalf. You rule with God and you rule on the behalf of God. So whatever God wants to do in that place, because you are God's ambassador, because you are God's representative, in that place, God is going to use you. See yourself as the representative of God in that place. That you are representing God. You are God's representative. You are God's co-laborer. You are working along with God. Listen, it is not legal. It is not right. It is not acceptable for God to come on the earth and do anything. The only legal entity, the only legal personalities that are supposed to be on this earth to function are human beings. And God will do nothing except God does it through human beings. Except God uses human beings to do it. So, God needs you. And that's the reason why God sent you to where he sent you. Matter of fact, I'm one of those that don't subscribe to the idea that serious Christians or pastors or whoever cannot work in government, cannot work in the political setting. No, it doesn't make sense because God has interest there. God has a stick in the politics of every nation. God has a stick in the economy of every nation. God has a stick in the economy of every nation. God has a stick. Listen to me. God doesn't want the devil to control the economy of any nation. You think God will throw his hand and allow the children of the devil to run the countries of the world? If the children of the devil run the countries of the world, all of their decisions will be influenced by their father, the devil. God wants his children that he has influence over to run the affairs of the nations of the earth. 
But where are his children? Where are his sons? Where are his daughters? Many times when they get the opportunity, they go there, they get corrupted because they don't think that that is ministry. They don't think that there are men and women of God in that place. So they go there and they allow the, the, the kingdom of darkness to prevail over them. They allow the kingdom of darkness to prevail over them. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I'm laughing because we, many of us got bad and wrong perspective. The way we look at life, the way we look at things, the way we look at ourselves, the way we look at the words we define, our perspective about these two words that I talk about right now, ministry and you know, ministry, ministry, ministry. Ministry is not restricted to church. The, the Bible says he gave us apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher to equip us, to build us, to mold us, to strengthen us, for us to do the work of ministry. Now, I think when many times we pre I preach this thing before, it's the Holy Spirit that opened my eyes to it. You know, many times I preach this thing that to do the work of the ministry and I was restricting the work of the ministry that the sins will do to the work in the church. It's wrong perspective. The sum total of everything we do is ministry. And this is, the, this is the real cause for the corruption. This is the real cause for us, you know, um, 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 not representing the interests of the kingdom in the places we work. So the king is not exalted. The king is hidden. <laughs> and the king wants to be exalted in that area. Man of God, woman of God. You are a man of God to that place. Even in your community, you are God's man there. <laughs> you don't have to be a preacher, but you are God's man there. You represent the interest of God in that area. And as a man of God, you have the authority from God to checkmate every demonic operation in that area. You have the authority Authority to put a stay order on the works of darkness in that area. You see, you are not functioning because you don't know that you are a man of God in that area, in that place where you work. I remember Jacob told Laban, say, from the day I came into your house, he said, you were nobody, you were nothing. My presence in your house have changed your status, changed your life. Listen, if you are working somewhere because of you, that company should excel. Because God wants to be glorified. God wants to be honored. God wants to be praised. God wants his name exalted. And who God will use to exalt his name? It's you. David saw himself as God's man. That's why David brought down Goliath. So I want you to change your perspective about men of God or woman of God today. You don't have to be announcing yourself as a man of God either. But you are a man of God. You don't need announcement. You are a man of God. You are a woman of God. A woman of God assigned to where you are. You are God's representative assigned to that place. Even if you were selling in the market, you are God's representative in that market. Even if you were a student, you are God's representative in that school. Hallelujah. The next word we talk about is the word worship. I told you I was going to talk about three words. And then I talk about the word secular, that you cannot separate secular from spiritual and stuff like that you are a spiritual being and everything you do is supposed to be influenced by the spirit you don't say monday i'm a secular person i'm doing a secular job you know i'm the director for plenty in this ministry in this place so this is my secular job i don't have to be spiritual about it uh, we can cheat we can do other things out of the way uh, Sunday when I go to church, there's another ministry that's my spiritual job. I'm going to do it with the spiritual sense. Past perspective. There are so many, but the next word I want to close on would be the word worship. What is worship? Worship, 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 worship. Yeah, many times, many of us have the perspective that worship means maybe we're going for worship service. we go going to church. Um, some people will say that, well, when you sing the song slow or soft, 
is worship. When you sing your heart, it's praise. Um, some would say um, worship is um, to bow. Uh, but um, if you look at the word worship, the etymology of that word, it talks about to venerate, to honor, to hold God in high esteem, to, 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 to respect, to show reverence, is the word worship. So if the word worship is not just to sing, it's not just to bow, but it's to honor, it's to respect God, or your God, to respect God, to honor, to venerate God, then um, uh, the word venerate means to honor, to hold in high esteem. Then the question will be, where do we worship? Is it in a building, a full wall? Is our worship restricted to a building? If to honor God, to venerate God, to respect God, to hold God in high esteem, then worship is not limited to a place. In fact, Jesus said the time will come and now is the time when the true worshiper will worship the Father, not in Jerusalem nor in this mountain, but those that worship will worship in spirit and in truth. It means that we can worship God everywhere. So it brings me to the conclusion that worship is the sum total of everything we do. And our worship center is everywhere. Our worship center should be everywhere. Even as I sit in this car, I should worship God with everything I do. I should honor God. That's what it means. Simply means I should honor God. So the issue is that after the service or after we close the church, the building, let me just say the church, because I told you the service never ends. The service never ends. Please mark this in your mind. The service never ends. There are two dimensions to the church. One is the church gather, and two is the church scatter. So when the church gather, the service is still going on. We gather to be equipped, empowered, capacitated, strengthened, molded. And then when the church scatter, the service is still going on. We are just scattered at all, represented in the different places, but service is still going on. So worship also is still going on. We are still worshiping God. We should still be worshiping God in our homes. Now worshiping by heart, the way we talk. The things we say, the things we do, our interactions, in the places of work, in the places that we go to school, we do business. The worship continues because we are not supposed to stop honoring God. We're not supposed to stop honoring God. We're supposed to honor God with everything we are and we have. So the worship does not end if worship is honoring God. So many times people think that when they come to church and people say, put on the attitude of worship, put on the attitude of praise. No, it, it, worship is not an attitude. Worship is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of life. It's honoring God. So I've come, my, my motive for this issue of perspective, dealing with the issue of perspective, it, is, it has been affecting us because the way you perceive a thing affects the way you behave. You know, when you look at me, your perspective about me will affect the way you behave to me. Yeah. The way you see me, your perspective about me will affect the way you behave to me. And these are all of the things that produce racism, tribalism, nepotism, and all of those things because the way people view things, the way people word view, the way they view things, the way they see it. So I bear with three words, the way we see the word ministry. It affects the way we do ministry. It affects the way we do ministry because how, what we see ministry to be. Because many of us only see ministry to be what we do in the church. So you see the same girl who was singing or the same young man who was playing the drum and worshipping and in the spirit, that same old young man, that same young man, that same person, when they're out there, you see them living completely differently because they don't see their life outside there as ministry. The same person. Or some people say, me, I'm not a man of God. I'm not a man of God. I can live any kind of way. At least me, I'm not a man of God. No, everybody's a man of God. In fact, the Bible says we are all priests. We are all priests. Another thing I want to talk about, let me close. 
<laughs> who is the anointed of God? Who is the anointed of God? Touch not my anointed. Do my servant no harm. <laughs> I know you say that, Pastor. That's a lie. The origin of that word, the first person to use that word is God in Exodus. And God was talking about the whole house of Israel. God said, Israel is my anointed. And we are the Israel of today. Every child of God is the anointed of God. John chapter 15 verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I have ordained you. And I have anointed you to be my servant. We, the Bible said, the whole house of Israel. When God was referring to them, God was saying, no, do not touch my anointed, the whole house of Israel, and do my servant no harm. You know, today we restrict it to the men of God. So we think that we only need anointing to preach. <laughs> we only need anointing to cast out demons. No! <laughs> you need anointing to be an accountant. <laughs> you need an anointing to become an economist. Joseph was an anointed economist. <laughs> Bezali was an engineer, a builder. God said, I have anointed Bezali to build. Who told you as a builder, as a mason, as a carpenter, <laughs> as, a, as an engineer, who told you you don't need anointing? Who told you as a seamstress? Like my wife. My wife is an anointed seamstress. Yes! And the anointing upon her makes her to, if, to come up with stars. You know, the anointing. <laughs> you don't have to be a pastor to be anointed. So the anointed of God is not a pastor. So people are desperately performing. Daniel and his friends were 10 times better than the astrologers, the magicians, and the Babalao and the Kamons and everything. In Babylon, when they called them, oh, Daniel chapter 1 verse 20, when they called them to inquire of them, he found them 10 times better. You can be an anointed student. You can become an anointed politician. The president of Tanzania, Jeff, uh, uh, share his post. He led his nation in prayer. He's not a pastor. He was not preaching Genesis chapter uh, 10 verse 5. He was not, oper he's not operating as a pastor. He's operating as a politician, as a president. But as I, I really love this guy. I admire him. He is like the Daniels of this time. Yes. An anointed president. <laughs> Holding to the standards of God. So we leave the whole world with the devil and his children. We leave the whole world with the devil and his children. We say politics is not for us. Business, economics is not for us. Science and technology is not for us. The moment a young man coming up in the church want to turn him to pastor. A young girl coming in the church want to turn her to pastor. And everybody will be pastor, will be heavenly useful, but earthly useless. Put us in the political arena, we are not useful there. Put us in science and technology, we are not useful there. Because we believe that that is a secular era. That's how we call it, we say it's secular. Don't go to circular thing or don't do circular work. I said it some time ago in ignorance. Circular school. <laughs> Who set the economy of Egypt? Joseph. Joseph set up the economy of Egypt. <laughs> Nothing like circular school. The fact that it, you doing it makes it not circular. The fact that you are doing it, change it from circular. Do you know that if the church if the church gather in a video club, do you know that it ceases to be a video club? Why? Because the church is gathered there. Do you know if the church gathers in a restaurant, at that moment it ceases to be a restaurant, it is the church for that moment. Because the church is gathered there. Everywhere the church gathers is a church. Mm. As a kingdom citizen, where you live is a kingdom embassy. What makes a place embassy? Because the ambassador lives there. 
Embassy is not bare in a special way because that's where the embassy is. So the fact that you, an ambassador, you are a minister of education or a deputy minister of education or a director or a managing director, wherever you are becomes the embassy of the kingdom. It is no more circular. You know, Anderson Williams always says, <laughs> he says, transforming them by the removing of their mind. You know, the Bible says renewing of the mind. He said, but some of us say transforming them by the removing of their mind. <laughs> you know, we don't want to think. We don't want to impact the world. And we leave it with people. Pastors, we need to start training people to impact those parts of the earth. Because God has interest in them. We need to read. We need to think out of the box. And read the Bible, looking at the precepts. What is the mind of God? What was God thinking when God said this? You know, I, be, I begin meditating on the precepts of what God is saying. And that's how I came, that's how the Holy Spirit ministered to me that doing the work of ministry is not restricted to the church. Whatever a minister is doing is ministry. <laughs> what, wherever the ambassador lives is embassy. <laughs> Wherever the king lives is a kingdom. <laughs> so what affects the place or impact the place is not the physical geographical place. It is you. So you are a man of God. You are a minister of the gospel. You are a minister of God. To wherever you find yourself as a representative of God. You are the anointed of God. I mean, I'm not giving you lessons to disrespect your spiritual leader. But you are also anointed by God. You are also not, you know, your pastor is anointed to preach. How God anointed Jesus Christ and Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power to do good. Who went about healing the sick and, I mean, you know, uh, 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 for God was with him. Now, Jesus was anointed to preach. Your pastor is anointed to preach, to train, equip you, empower you, capacitate you. You are also anointed maybe to become an accountant, to become a carpenter. Bezali was anointed to build. Moses was anointed to become a leader, a prophet. But God also said, Bezali is anointed. Moses was not intimidated. Moses was not troubled because Moses understood that his anointing was different from the anointing of Bezali. My prayer is that God will help us. You think about other words that we have been using. I just spoke about four right now. Or maybe almost five. I spoke about ministry. I spoke about secular and spiritual. I spoke about worship. I spoke about their being the anointed, and I also spoke about um, what's the favorite one I spoke about? Worship. We have been having wrong perspective of all these, and has been affecting the way we relate and behave to them. Know today that perspective is very important. Perspective is everything. The way you perceive the thing will affect the way you behave to it, or the way you relate to it. The way you look at yourself, what you perceive is how you will behave. The perspective you have about yourself is how you will behave. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me. Please share this video. Somebody needs to be free. Somebody needs to be delivered. Somebody needs to be set loose. That work you are doing, God is there with you. Because you are representing God, God is there with you. Oh, I enjoy reading Ben Carson's book where sometimes he will be carrying on surgery and and, 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 and he said one time the blood was oozing from the child's brain and they used all of their, 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 their instruments, the blood could not stop and he said to himself, in the name of Jesus, cease and immediately the blood cease, he is God's representative there, when the setter scope, microscope and all the other scope again cannot work then he implored the name of Jesus and the blood ceased because he was not an ordinary doctor, he was a doctor who is a man of God representing God in that hospital. If you are a nurse, you are God's representative. When your, when your instruments fail, employ the name of Jesus, the name that is higher than every other name. Listen to me. When nobody can come up with with idea, with how to solve some, 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 some difficult problem in your place of work, 
you know, and things are so hard. You can come up with ideas. God will give you strategy how to do that thing. It will amaze people. They will ask you, what is the secret to your knowledge? Why is it you different from us? All of us are nurses in this place. All of us are lawyers. All of us are accountants in this place. But why your own is different? Yours is different because you have the spirit of God on the inside of you and you are God's representative in that hospital or wherever you are and God wants to glorify himself there and God is going to use you to glorify himself. That's it. Simple. That's why I want you to come. That your case will be, you will be exceptional. Even if you are cooking, <laughs> if you are even a cook in a restaurant, your own will just taste different, extra, special. As of this Daniel, he had another spirit. He was distinct. Daniel chapter 6, from verse 1 to 3, read it. The new king Jesus said, Daniel distinguished himself. You will be distinguished. You will be distinct. You will be different. Why? Because you are representing God. You are representing God. Stop seeing the pastor as the only man of God. You are also a man of God. You are also a woman of God. And I owe no apology for saying this. Yes. Stop seeing the pastor as the only anointed of God. God has anointed God anointed him to, to preach, to teach, respect him for that, submit to him as your spiritual head or her. But God has also anointed you to do something. And do it as the anointed of God. Most of the time, if you are doing handiwork, or you are doing brain work. There are so many things God hates. From the, the people in Babylon, the Nebuchadnezzar, the, 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 the and all of those people, but God revealed them to Daniel. God revealed the interpretation of the dream of Pharaoh to Joseph because Joseph was God's man in Egypt. You are the man of God in that place where you are, in that community. And because you are there, things have to change. Because you are working with that company, Things have to change. That company has to excel. That company has to be better. Things have to change. They will notice it because of your presence there. Why? Because a man of God is here. A woman of God is here. And because God's representative is here, God's eyes are here. <laughs> the difference will be made. Because you are in that marriage as a man of God there, representing God in that family, that family will not sink. Jesus was in the boat. Oh, God. <laughs> and the storm beat the boat. The wind was tempestuous. There was a tsunami. But the boat could not capsize because Jesus was in the boat. You are carrying Jesus. He lives in you. Everywhere you go, you are his carrier. God bless you. God calls a face to shine on you. God favors you. And God changed your perspective of how you see things. How you see people, how you look at yourself, how you look at what you do, how you look at your ministry. You know, what everything you do is a ministry. Everybody has a ministry. There's nobody without a ministry. The moment you become born again, you have a ministry. Your ministry is not restricted to the church. Your ministry is the sum total of everything you do. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me. And I want to be very thankful to God for all of you who has been supporting this podcast with sending data and being a blessing. God bless you and God honors you. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Shalom, peace. God bless you all. Amen and amen. Thank you. Have a good and a godly day. Have a healthy time. Let God protect you. God provide for you and God preserve you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Please share it. Let other people listen. Let other people be blessed. God bless you. Thank you.